Hi everyone, I'm Glenda with SureFit Designs and today I'm going to talk about the cover stitch machine and some of the tips and techniques that I've learned when using it. First of all, I would just like to mention that if you have the available space within your sewing room, try to have a separate cover stitch machine rather than a a serger with cover stitch options. About a year and a half ago I actually was in the market for a new serger and I did buy one of the sergers that could also do the cover stitch properties and stitching. And you know it's great, yes it can do it, but there are some distinct disadvantages. And number one is that when you're in the midst of constructing a garment and you want to do a decorative line of cover stitching like I've done on the neckline of this t-shirt, well, then you had to stop the surging. You had to take the needles out, put them into the cover stitch position. Then you had to lower the, uh, the knife and change the plate. And then after all of that, get your cover stitching done. And then you had to take it back into surging mode. So if you do that two or three times during garment construction, well, it gets to be a little bit of a nuisance. So I've just got this Janome cover stitch machine. It's the Cover Pro uh, 1000 CPX and I absolutely love it. For those of you who don't know what a cover stitch is, it's what you often see on the bottom of t-shirts in ready to wear. Now this isn't a ready to wear t-shirt but it is a t-shirt that I have put the cover stitch on and it's when you see those absolutely two perfect rows of parallel stitching going at the hemline. And when you look at the inside, what you see is the herringbone pattern. So that's typically where you're going to see cover stitching. Another place that you'll see it is in the interior of the garment, like I've done in when I was matching the uh, chevron striping here, and I wanted that cover stitching to go right on top of the uh, chevron seam. And of course, as I've said, I've used it at the neckline on the turquoise t-shirt that I'm wearing. But another thing that I've often done is that I've taken the cover stitch and sewed it upside down so that the needle threads are on the inside of the garment and the, uh, the herringbone pattern is actually on the outside of the garment. This is a vest that I'm currently making and because of the puffy texture of the fabric, when I did some tests before I got going here, the three uh, top threads, they just kind of got buried in the look of the fabric. So I decided that what I wanted to do was put woolly nylon in the lower looper so that it gave it just a little bit more depth and oomph in the final uh, view. And uh, then I cover stitched these princess line seams in the vest. So there's lots of uses for your cover stitch machine. And so now I'm going to teach you a few of the techniques that I was taught to uh, be really comfortable using the, the cover stitch. This particular machine, one of the reasons, again, that I really love it, is that it's got a wider flat bed in between the needle and the motor housing. The one on my serger, I've only got about uh, two inches, and it's really hard to jam a lot of fabric through there, depending on what area of the garment you're constructing. Another thing that I did was I bought a clear presser foot. It comes with a metal one, but I really like the clear one because you can see through it. Another thing with this Janome is that this piece slips out and you can also get um, an add-on uh, flat tray table like this and it just slides right in place and it does go in like that. And sometimes I leave it on depending on what I'm working on, but if you need to get into the uh, face of the machine to uh, thread the um, lower looper, then you've got to remove this anyway. So I'm just going to leave it off for the demonstration today. So let me pop that piece back in place and talk a little bit about the threading of the machine. When you are cover stitching, you can do a two thread, let me get my pointers here, you can do a two thread on the left hand side, you can do a narrow two thread on the right hand side, you can do a wide two thread and remove the center needle, or you can leave all three needles in place 
and do a three thread cover stitch, which is what I'm going to do today. And I've put in three different colors of thread so that you can really see uh, the resulting difference. You're going to want to thread the needle on the left hand side first of all, and then the middle needle, which is my white one, and then the right hand side, which is my pink one. Now to thread the looper, it is so easy to do. You just come down through this thread uh, guide right here, it pops into this thread guide, then it goes through all three of these eyes right there, and then to thread this looper, oh gosh, it couldn't be simpler. You just pop that out, and then the thread comes up here through that thread guide and through this one. And then you're going to want to leave a little tail coming down like this on the inside of the, the mechanism here. And the thing to remember is don't forget to push that back inside. If you leave it out here, the machine will still sew, but it won't cover stitch. You're not going to harm anything and you'll go, why didn't this stitch? And it's because that was hanging towards the uh, inside. So you want to make sure you pop that back inside. Another thing that I should mention when I was doing the gold vest that I just showed you, I did use this woolly nylon and um, I could not get the end of the woolly nylon through that looper eye even though it was a really big eye and it's just because woolly nylon has this stretchy kind of rebounding fat properties to it. So another little tip that I might just tell you about is put a thread leader on here. You can see that I've done that in pink and then that went through the eye of the needle really easily and then it just pulled up through. Now when you go to start uh, cover stitching, you, as I say, that thread leaves uh, is hanging down on the inside and we'll just close it up like this. Your top threads are always going to go over the top of the presser foot and off to the left. And unlike surging, where they go to the back of the machine, this is where the position is that you want them to be. And so then, typically when you go to uh, do a hem, which is what I'll, I'll demonstrate today, you're going to press your hem up into position. And the thing that's really important here is that the hem be absolutely evenly pressed up. So that's a one inch wide fold that I've done. Now, again, typically you want your top threads on the top of the fabric, but if you can't see through the fabric, you're not going to know exactly where to run your needles. So what you're going to do is just turn the fabric over and you've got your perfectly pressed hem there. I'm going to set that in to the needles right like this and I'm going to take the middle needle and I'm going to lay it just so that it comes down right inside that um, the edge of the of the hemline so that I do end up with a perfect cover over that raw edge of the hemline and then take some painters tape uh, the, the blue painters tape and give yourself a little thread guide right here they do make them um, a, uh, an attachment for this machine that extends out here, but painter's tape works just as well. Let me just release that there. All right, now what you're going to do is turn it over so that you're looking at the right side, line this up, and I like to start the uh, needles right in the down position so that I've picked up just a little bit of the fabric. And you know, I should mention something else. Some professionals will tell you to uh, start a leader. So you can actually put a little piece of fabric there before you begin and start stitching on the leader fabric and then make your line of cover stitching. You can do that if you want to and you can do it at the end as well. I'm not going to do that. Um, I'd like to show you a way to get started and stopped without putting the leader in. But if you put the leader in, then what you'll want to do is come by with a little dab of uh, seam sealant and just seal the threads before you cut it. So now I'm going to lower the presser foot down like that and I'm ready to begin cover stitching. So we'll just follow this along the line of the blue thread or the blue tape like this.
And now as I'm nearing the end, as I said, you could put your leader in here if you want to, to finish that off. I'm going to hand wheel this just towards the last stitch like that. Then what you'll want to do is raise your needles into the highest position that they will go like that. Then you'll want to raise up the presser foot. That does start to release the tension off of the locking system in there. But then what you'll want to do is come in with a pair of tweezers, lift that presser foot up, and just start to begin to pull those threads towards you. If they are a little sticky and don't want to come towards you, then take your hand to the presser foot level, <laughs> presser foot lever, lift it up a little bit more. Now those threads will really pull forward easily. Then what you want to do is come through and just clip them like this. And then with the presser foot up, give a quick tug to the back and off to the side. And what that did was it pulled the threads through to the back side and it locked them with that lower looper thread. And so now I'll just remove my top threads. Those are the top threads that I cut from uh, when I made that little clip. And now I'm just going to cut the uh, looper thread. And they are completely locked at this point in time. You shouldn't need to put seam sealant on them. They should be just fine. If you feel more comfortable doing that or tying them, you can. And these threads here um, are also locked. Where they, This end that you start on, those threads are always locked. It's these ones that if you don't lock them, you'll, you can pick up your looper thread and go zip and it'll just completely undo. So you've got to be really careful about that. So now you can see what that looks like. My, it would have been stitched this way. So that's the left needle, the center needle being white, and the right needle being the pink. Now, one of the things that I really like about this little mechanism is that you can pull it out, and now you've got a free arm. So if you're, let me get over here, and this little sample I prepared. So now let's just assume that's like a cuff on a, hem or a sleeve or whatever. And now I'm going to turn it so that the right side is out like this and I can slip it over the free arm. Now my threads are all pulled up on the top side of the machine and that's fine. You don't have to reposition them to do this. And then I'm going to start stitching uh, to do this hemline. So it's that free arm is really nice to get in here to allow the fabric to turn smoothly as you go around. The one thing that I should mention to you is if you have a lot of bulk in your seams, which you could have depending on what seams are meeting with another seam, you may want to start off the uh, joining seam. So just move a little bit further forward or start it a little bit back like that off of that center seam and then lower that presser foot and now begin doing your cover stitch all the way around. This is just gonna pull around that free arm like this. You might just have to move it carefully and do a few stitches at a time so that you keep sliding it around. This actually is easier if it was like a um, larger circumference, like the hem of a t-shirt. Some of your sleeve circumferences are going to be too narrow to do this. And here we're coming up to the other side. Now I'm going over the joining seam. And when you get to these last few stitches, I'm going to roll it by hand. Let's just get those right over here and I'll deal with them later. I'm going to roll these last few stitches by hand so that I get a set of stitches right on top of my beginning stitches. And I'm going to go about two stitches beyond. And then in this down position, 
Now I'll show you that removal technique one more time. You raise your needles, always pulling that hand wheel towards you, raise your needles to the highest position, and you don't want them to start the next revolution going downward. Then raise that presser foot. Oops, where would we go there? There we are, right at the back. And then lift the nose of the presser foot, get your grabbers, your little tweezers under here, and just get the thread started. And there's actually one other tool that I want to show you. This looks like a, a dental hook, but it's absolutely great for uh, grabbing these threads and moving them forward. Then I'm going to lift the presser foot up at the back, releasing all the pressure. And now just simply take my nippers, clip the threads, give a quick tug to the back and off to the side. And this one's stuck a little bit. So just maneuver the hand wheel, twist it a little bit, there it comes, all the way out like that. That thread right there, that is the looper thread. And when I pull like this, these threads are the top stitching threads, or the beginning threads, but the threads for the, uh, the end of the line of stitching, these are them right here. They're all totally locked and they won't run. And it made an absolutely beautiful, perfectly stitched three rows of cover stitching on the, the hem of this sample. Okay, so that's how easy it is to use your cover stitch machine. I know if you have one, you already enjoy it. And if you don't, I know that if you get one, you certainly will enjoy it. For this and other informative videos on fitting, designing and sewing, and working with your Surefit Designs fitting kits, please make sure that you go on over to the Surefit Designs Learning Center and then pop into the video library. There's over 140 different videos on fitting, designing, and sewing, and they're all there for your benefit, for your learning, enjoyment, and for your information and education. And while you're there, if you haven't yet already joined the Surefit Designs community, that's very easy to do. Just three easy steps. Number one, make sure you subscribe to the Surefit Designs newsletter. And in doing so, you'll get regular email updates and you're going to get some free gifts to get you started. Number two, make sure you subscribe to my YouTube channel. And there's a little subscribe button underneath. And then the third thing I'd like you to do is like this video. And again, there's a little button underneath this video to both subscribe and like it. Thanks so much for watching. I hope you've enjoyed it and I'll see you again next time.